Hello and welcome to the Easy Allies podcast. I'm your moderator, Brandon Jones. Joining me this week, panelists Michael Damiani. Yo. Michael Huber. Damiani. My Take No Prisoners co-moderator, Mr. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. And making it all happen by starting the Zoom call in Slack, Ian Hank. Huber. Miss you last week, Ian. <laughs> Thank you. Just I had to operate this very complicated machinery. And it was confusing and stressful. I did not stressful. miss you. I was watching a very depressing Nick <laughs> Cave <fair>. concert. <laughs> <laughs> was it, it was, streamed? Yeah, it was streamed. And you had Dude, to buy cool. a ticket. And it was like during your specific time. So like Whoa. I couldn't watch it at any other time. That's that's why. Otherwise, I wouldn't skip for something like that. But awesome. it was like a one-off. That's yeah. really cool. Speaking of Pretty appointment viewings, awesome. it's time for the Easy Allies podcast. We are here to discuss some of the biggest headlines in the world of video games. But before we do that, we must answer for all of the mistakes we made last week. Ian, please begin corrections music. Boop. Players can move between PSO2 New Genesis and PSO2. Yay. It's not like a totally separate thing. It's not Realm Reborn. Uh, we thought it might be. The, this was completely my bad. The Ascent was shown in Xbox's presentation for May. It's a Xbox exclusive. I don't know why I thought Sony showed that off. But I was like, the Ascent, Ascent. I've seen that somewhere before. Ubisoft said next-gen games this fall will be $60. They didn't say nothing about 2021. Um, yeah. Uh, did you see my my little clap back on that? Who knows? Yeah, it's... it's it, just, it, that's just, like, that's just investor, like, slash legal speak. You know, it's like, yeah, of course they're not going to tell you what they're going to do next year. It doesn't mean anything's going to change. They're just not going to tell you because why yeah. make promises when you don't have to? Yeah. Xbox Games Showcase was the first time we saw Destiny 2 Beyond Light in action. We thought that looked neat with the ice powers. We weren't sure if that was yeah. the first time. It was very much the first time. You Gotta Move is a traditional spiritual. Blue singer and guitar player Mississippi Fred McDowell did a slide guitar version of it. And most notably, the Rolling Stones have a version on their album Sticky Fingers. Also, Aerosmith has a live DVD called You Gotta Move. And this is from Blood. I love this. I love the deep dives. I haven't done many of these in corrections. Stalker 2 was originally announced to be in development back in 2010, less than a year after Call of Pripyat was released, but in 2012, GSE Game World was dissolved and the game was cancelled. After two years of development, a lot of the studio left and formed their own studio, Vostok Games, and tried to get the rights IP for the game from the GSE Game World, but were unsuccessful. There were rumors the IP and rights were sold off to places like Bethesda or BitComposer. These were proven to be false. GSE Game World reopened slash relaunched in 2014, but no mention of Stalker as a series or as a new game was mentioned officially until May 2018, when they announced that Stalker 2 was in the works again and planned for a 2021 release. It is believed, but not 100% confirmed that this was a complete restart, meaning it is not based on the two years of work done before the original game's cancellation in 2012. So this version of the game was only announced two years ago. End corrections yeah, music. I, 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 speaking of corrections, I don't think I wrote down what the actual source of that was. The source <laughs> of that was Daniel Bloodworth. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually write all that out. But. I love I love hearing corrections the week after when you're not there because it's always just like what how did that come up? <laughs> there are not many Easy Allies podcasts that I have missed, but the ones that I have, I, I very much enjoyed cutting them after the fact. I was like, what? I wish I would have been there for that conversation. The comments love to make fun of me because every week I always say we're we're winding down gaming gladiators. We got three <laughs> left. This is it, folks. Oh, okay, okay, three. The final three gaming gladiators. This, this Next third week, there'll be three left. This third, stop it. This third, the third to last, I want to I want to have something a little comical, a little jovial, you know, not so intense, no grappling hooks, no blades, nothing excellent, like that. Excellent. From Sweat T, Kirby versus Ditto. If needed, this Ditto is level 62. Anybody not know Ditto? Do you know Ditto? Is that a the, Pokemon? The Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Ditto is a Pokemon that can become yeah. any Pokemon. Featured. It tends to be other Pokemon. He's a clone Pokemon. Well, that's a spoiler. <laughs> Does it have to do it like Kakashi, where he needs to like see the the it is, Pokemon it is he wants the, to turn into? It is the Pokemon you're fighting. So Ditto would basically be okay. able to become okay. Kirby, or could have become potentially another Pokemon before the fight, and then come in with those abilities. Okay. He's like, I'm gonna open with Charizard, and then Kirby him later. Kirby, and then you have Kirby, which kind of follows the same pattern. Kirby seems like nigh indestructible to me. Like Kirby can stretch. Mm -hmm. And like has a black hole inside of it, or something. <laughs> that, that thing in Smash Brothers Ultimate took out everyone in the Nintendo universe except mm -hmm. for Kirby. Yeah, Kirby, Kirby is so the I think strongest if, character according to Nintendo. Yeah. 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 So I think Kirby takes it. Ditto. Ditto is just a squishy blob. Like it. I don't even know if it takes on the properties of the creatures it 
mimics, but like, nah, Kirby's just yeah. gonna slurp that little juice boy up. I'll say, sorry, yeah, Nintendo already answered this. Kirby, Kirby's the strongest. Kirby can't. Yeah, yeah. Kirby OP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Kirby's like god level. Kirby can fight Goku. He's a mega tier. <laughs> Baby, baby. Yeah, dude, Kirby just sucks up Goku. Boom, Saiyan powers. Let's right. go. Yeah, he has the power, man. Yeah. <laughs> Season two of Gaming Gladiators. You know, I only pick video game characters. Otherwise, of course, Goku would have been in the conversation. <laughs> wait, weeks, weeks, oh, weeks wait. Ago. Did you just admit that in three weeks it's just going to be season two of Gaming Gladiators? I was saying when we did, maybe we'll do it next year. We, we'll <laughs> oh, okay, start with right. we'll start with Kirby versus Goku. That'll be the first one. Season two, <laughs> more of the same. Could you feel that groan? Could you feel the the, the tension that just happened again uh, when you said that? <laughs> Everyone in the comments was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Not a massive news week this past week, which I really enjoyed, actually. It was uh, interesting weighing all of the different events that we've had lately, all the games that have been announced this summer. It was kind of nice having a lighter week and just focusing on some of these smaller things or really focusing on stories that I want to tell. And this is a happy story. I love when a Kickstarter comes out that is making something that everybody wants to play and does extremely well. A Yuden Chronicle, 100 Heroes was launched, got $1.5 million on day one, currently at $2.3 million with 23,500 backers, more than that. 29 days to go. <laughs> Already wow. off to an excellent start. Nice. That's uh, Suikoden Ian, love, dude. Damn. Ian, you are the bit. Th this is a spiritual successor to Suikoden. You are a big Suikoden fan. Why is this a big deal, Ian Hink? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's following that same... That's tried and true. Uh, tr my friend, my friend, also named Brandon, uh, was kind of teasing this because he was like, "They're just doing that thing where they they mention like every developer that has anything to do with anything ever, and saying like they're all on this thing." And I'm like, "But Suikoden though, <laughs> like, and it worked for Bloodstained." So, yeah, Suikoden. If you don't know, uh, there it's a series, a very very lovely series. Uh, first one, I believe, was on the PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation 1, Suikoden 1 and 2. Probably the best in the series, but 3 is pretty good, too. Um, and they're about collecting, like, 108 people and building up a base. And this one is 100 people, and you're building up a base. So it basically is only 8% worse than Suikoden. <laughs> So but 108 isn't 8%, so... Right, I guess it'd be like 6%. Yeah, it'd be like 6.6% yeah, yeah. like worse. Dodge that correction. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will come in with the real math. But yeah, uh, they're great. And the art style of the old ones was really good pixel art. Some of my favorite pixel art. Actually, fun inside fact, The uh, when I was talking to Toby for the art for Mysterious Monsters... I primarily gave him Suikoden stuff as examples, um, and it, you know, they just nailed that look. So, and this new one it looks really good too. So, that staff you are referring to referenced on the Kickstarter page: Yoshitaka Murayama, director, producer, and co-creator of Suikoden; Junko Kawano, director of Suikoden once Murayama left; uh, Junichi Murakami, the director of Castlevania: Aria of Sorrow a mm. renowned pixel artist, and Osamu Komuta, the director of Suikoden Tactics and Suikoden Tear Crees? So, Unfamiliar like, with that one. Sounds like something that didn't come out in the U.S., yeah. yeah I, don't know I, if that, I don't know if we got that one. And the rest of the team comes from a partner studio called Coyote Runner, and they're also collaborating with The Yeeti and Studio Hive. And this is a dense, very GIF-heavy, video-heavy. There's a lot of this game. This yeah. is definitely a well-established thing. And this certainly is just blowing past all of their goals. Um, um, Matoi Sakuraba is one of the composers, too. Oh, oh wonderful. Nice. Were yeah. they on the original? Well, I'm, I'm not sure if he did Suikoden. I know he's done a lot of Camelot games, so like oh, Golden okay. Sun, Mario Golf. Um, it's definitely like one of those com composers where when you hear their stuff, you kind of know it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yep, that's, that's Sakuraba for sure. Cool. Koji Igarashi's on the Kickstarter page too, just saying nice things about all these people. Oh, really? Shall we? Yeah. Shout out. That's Which, awesome. Yeah, not only, yeah, shout out to a, a famous developer, but a, a, you know, someone who has had uh, tremendous success on Kickstarter. So Very successful nice Kickstarter. Passing it along. And the Kickstarter does a very good job of saying, here are pitfalls we've seen other Kickstarters get into. We very much do not want to do that. And so we are, we are focusing on these things. Damiani, have you given this a look? You feeling good about it? Yeah. Um, I just double checked. I guess Sakuraba didn't do a... Uh, 
didn't compose any of the Suikoden games. Okay, yeah, oh, I didn't okay. think he did. But uh, they've done a lot of work, like Starshin, uh, Tales, Valkyrie, Profile. Like, there's just too many games to list, so that's like really good. But uh, I- I'm really glad this happen. Really glad this can happen because obviously there's clear Konami was not going to let this series continue. They 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 or they just don't care about it. They they really don't. Um, I guess I didn't know this, but uh, the the who what's their name? I'm sorry. Uh, Murayama, sorry, uh, the creator behind this, mm-hmm. uh, actually departed Konami. I didn't know this. They they left after Suikoden three, so they haven't been uh, they haven't been involved on this for a while. So this is kind of nice to see the original creator come back and, and get a chance to to go back maybe to the series roots because I do know four onward aren't viewed as you know as fondly as the first two or at least the first three. So it, it I, I think given what they said that they're aware of like what other things have gone wrong with other kickstarters also that some have turned out pretty well like uh, bloodstains turned out pretty darn well i think and i think it's not just it's not necessarily the pitfalls uh, let's be clear they're they're referencing uh kj nafune and they're re- referencing mighty number no. nine here like this is like the, the 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 classic one that failed spectacularly i think that speaks more to kj nafune was not was more of a business person rather than like a creative force behind any of the games they made. Whereas like Igarashi and uh, Moriyama here, hopefully, are like definitely the the brains and the creative like the creative geniuses behind these games that made the secret sauce. Of what these why these games are so good, and I feel like everything we've seen so far is just like proven that. And let's just, you know let's hope it you know comes out and everyone's happy with it. For sure, I'm glad you brought up the creators, Damiani, because like Yu Suzuki with Shenmue 3, and while it was like d- somewhat divisive, the game, you know, the Kickstarter was still successful. They fulfilled their promise. The game came out. It wasn't like a sketch botched Kickstarter because he's the creative force behind it. So that's good. Yeah, I wonder how many people behind this are just pure Suikoden fans or if there are like people just generally into Kickstarter that get excited when you know projects like this pick up I wonder if there's a certain number you can get past on Kickstarter and then you just start getting general support from other people because they're like oh okay you know if one million people came you know however many people was it 23,000 you know JRPG fans can't be wrong it uh, just it, it feels so good because like any beloved franchise that is lying dormant has the potential to come back to life through kickstarter Mm -hmm. like konami's not going to do shit with this same with castlevania so the creators taking it into their own hands and asking for support from the fans and just saying like if you want it back us and the fans came out and it's being made so it's just it's just a really good vibe story to watch and like damiani said hopefully you know when it comes out it'll be It'll be good. I think it's, it's, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll just also add real quick. I think it's good, like, w- with Bloodstained as well, that these games are breaking away from... They're not continuations of the original series. I, I think this is a better situation. Even uh-huh. if Konami had offered to give up the Suikoden name or let them use it, I think this is better because they have, they have more control. Who knows what the heck Konami is going to demand in the future or anything like that? Same thing with you know Here Castlevania. If if they went with Castlevania instead of Bloodstained, I I they control their future now. It's it's completely in their hands. Much better. Do you think Konami even cares? Do you think they see the success of Bloodstained or see the success of this Kickstarter they and are like, oh shit, maybe people do no. want these nope. games? Like no, they don't they, even. They, they make, have the IPs. They make they two have... million. They make two million dollars in pachinko machines at yeah. gas stations every day, man. They don't care. Yeah, but I mean, you said uh, three main games with 108 characters each. That's a that's a gotcha game waiting to happen if it hasn't already. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. They should just oh. puke out a phone game. <laughs> I would probably play that puke-filled phone, <laughs> iPhone game. I, yeah, shit, man, I'd be in there. Mateus, Apple, all the all the favorites. Ian Murayama, before the Kickstarter launches, he calls you and he says, "Ian, I know you're a big fan." Uh, I'm scared. I don't know. We, I don't know if we have an audience. Are, are you know? Are we going to make it? Are we going to find success? Are you surprised that this is reaching the numbers that it is? Have you felt alone as a Sukoden fan, or are you like, I knew it, I knew it? When you when you said that it had already hit two mil, I was surprised. I was like, oh wow, okay, because like Sukoden has always been in that place where it's like, I loved it to pieces, and everyone who's played it 
that I've encountered loves it, but I've never known how big the fandom for it mm-hmm. is. Uh, you know, because a lot of people, I think, s- slept on it. And uh, yeah, so it, it just feels so good that it's that it's hit this goal so f- fast. 23,000 people, you said? 23,500. It's like 23,500, you know, 60-something. So, I mean, six, I, I believe but like $2 million dollars sounds like a lot. Uh, I believe that Suikoden has 25 thousand fans you know out there <laughs> that's pretty that's a much easier number for me to believe <laughs> <laughs> and you know what you get for that 2.3 million you get fortress town mode consoles unlocked past that tier a cooking oh. mini game new game plus which is music to my ears a new sound effect package chinese <laughs> localization a guild system a fishing mini game and a top nice. battle mini game Whatever that and means. I noticed there are a couple of new characters unlocked in there too. Yes, there like. are. Perel, Euphurious, the seventh, and Hildy. And there's a fourth so new character is like the next one. It's like it's Martin. Getting or something, up or... to 108 there. Well, yeah, Jones. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I don't that know. Yeah, I guess that would be. <laughs> I guess we're at 103 closer. now. Ian, does it not being sweeped in like affect your hype at all? Because that game does have like a. The originals do have kind of that warm kind of like even like a ghost of tsushima vibe kind of just like the warmth and the samurai and ninja vibe uh does that concern you at all or are you still like just as hyped the fact that it's even being a spiritual successor to me like the big thing and and it looks like they're nailing it in an updated kind of way but the look of it is is to me the because yeah you're you hit the nail on the head they feel sukoden and sukoden 2 are so warm and the storytelling is so rich. I think Sweet Coden 2 is the first game that made me cry. Because, uh, like, a character dies, and you're just like, oh. And, like, uh, just that the fortress mode, which I'm assuming is the town building thing. Yeah. Uh, it was that first tier. That that, it's the most important yeah. tier. They're like, we got to the easy that that couch. We got to hit unlock, that first. Because, oh, yeah. like building your base is like the thing of these games almost it's like maybe it's just another know. mode within that like that's a thing you do maybe. but now there's they're yeah, building maybe you're protect top. yourself from spiders maybe yeah. that's just the game like reaching the goal in a way it's like yeah, yeah we like first one is like yeah that's just the game but yeah i i'm not i'm not overly worried i think that it looks like any kickstarter that comes out with this much uh pre-production and like assets to show and like they even have a disclaimer on there that says like hey the behind the scenes stuff was filmed before the work from home orders so it's like they've been working on this for five six months at least you know and i think they their orders were before ours so it's like they've been working on this for a long time there's a lot of stuff prepared for this kickstarter so you you get a really good sense of what this game looks like and like ian said it it's gorgeous so you get a a good look and those are the kickstarters that hit two million really fast is when it's Mm -hmm. like you've already shown that like you've got money in this you know like it's 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 on its way so yeah damiani what kind of interesting nintendo news came out of this announcement pop oh, quiz hot shot know? i can answer this if you know. is this oh and sorry you, blood. I, so this uh, they basically said they're not committing to a switch port of this game because of the lower specs they've seen. Basically, they were referencing other Kickstarters where they promised, uh, like, PSP ports, Wii, po- Wii U ports, and those weren't simply possible. They just never came to pass, and some of the fan base, the backers, got angry at that. So rather than risking that pitfall, which is a, a whole different beast in the game design itself, it's just they said they're not committing to it, but in their release, they said next generation <laughs> Switch because... They're just assuming there's another Switch coming at some point. Mm, and with how okay. long this is... Pro- they're assuming this game's probably going to be in development for at least probably another year plus. Oh, sure, at um, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, probably two years. It's probably yeah, going to yeah. be in development for another two years, I would guess. They're probably guessing that Nintendo's going to have a Switch 2 coming, or Switch Pro, and they'll probably put the on that at some point, I would guess. So it wasn't that they have inside knowledge in that uh, press release. They're just, assu- they're just uh, assuming... They're just yeah. assuming. They absolutely uh-huh. are. They have no knowledge. Oh, oh when you see, no way. quote, no Nintendo's way. next generation console in black and white. No. <laughs> I don't know. Day one, though, on that thing. Day one, next generation Nintendo console. I'll jump at that. 
Yeah, I mean, they actually say the elephant in the room is that while nobody knows what Nintendo's plans are, uh, yeah. But yeah, what, did they actually, I'm trying to see if they actually said how long they think they're going to take in this, but... But yeah, they talk about how... Two years at least. Well, it's like the development yeah. of the original Suikin, I looked it up, took two years for PlayStation oh. 1. So I'm guessing this will take at least two years. That oh, yeah, but the... Okay, here's an interesting detail, though. So, uh, in the end, if no such console is announced by the time we need to create new console version branches, we will go through the major challenges needed to bring it to whatever, you know, the Switch, the current hmm. Switch. Nice. Huh. Friendly. The the battle gif that they have on there looks pretty crazy with like people, characters like jumping in from all over the place. That's something I haven't I haven't looked at this very closely yet because I'm kind of just excited about it. But like um do does it show if the combat works in a similar way to Sukoden where it's like you give six people orders and then they all do it? I, I really wonder if that is the case. It was not. it was a six person party in turn based. Oh, okay, but cool. I cool, did cool. not I did not dig turn that based deep. Hype. Turn based. Damiani, before we met to record this podcast, minutes before we met, you were streaming Ghost of Tsushima. Yes, I was. Have you been enjoying your playthrough of this video game? I was. I played uh played on lethal difficulty today. Nice. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Is that the one they just added? Yeah, I did. A, I actually oh, did a sure. uh, a real dual showdown uh, with a like a boss, whatever, uh, with the, the the spirit one. So you so yeah, that difficulty's new, and you don't have to like unlock that or play that nope, on a second playthrough. Adds, you can just, you just dial that up. Go and right down. to the setting. There's a third one next to hard now that just says lethal right there. Bam. Do you think we'll get to the headline in a second? Do you think they added that because the criticisms that it wasn't the stealth wasn't that tough? Does it make stealth harder, or is it mostly just like no? Hand -to -hand? All it does is I think it makes it feel more, I mean, lethal. You yeah. can one-shot enemies, they can one-shot you. you. You screw up on a parry and they get a, a hit in, you're going down. So. My favorite moments of that game were the beginning when you were underpowered because I, I played on hard and if you miss a parry or miss a block, like you are dead. So the very early couple hours of this game, I died so many times, but then the open world nature, you go, you find all these upgrades, it's like, all right, yeah. now I'm the OP one. So the fact that they added lethal is yeah. smart, awesome. More, more often than not, I feel like I have to back off. I got to back off. I got to gain my footing. I got to gain my bearings again and get ready, especially like the bigger, the, the brutes, the, the heavy dudes. They're just like... Man, their, their swings are wide swings and like more enclosed encampments. It's just, uh, it, it's intense, but it's fun. Uh, I'm still, I don't think it's that radically hard. It's just nice to finally be dying more. Um, because mm -hmm. I was playing on normal before and I was like, you don't ever die on normal. So this, it's, it's, it's a nice change. But I do see, uh, some people asking to maybe, I haven't played on hard yet, uh, because hard. I guess hard will extend out battles longer, whereas lethal, it's over. Like the oh. even boss battles, it's done. It, it, you go <laughs> quickly, wow. and it, it's a it's samurai showdown. It's like that. It, it's you. What was the other samurai? There's one other samurai game where lethal blows. You're done. Samurai gun. <laughs> samurai gun. Samurai gun. Hard yes. hard's really nice, Damiani. It's really nice. This video game here, this Ghost of Tsushima, is officially the PS4's fastest-selling first-party original IP debut. That's a lot of words. So that Observing. means on the PS4, mm -hmm. the, this is the, the first time we've ever gotten a game in this series. It's beaten all of those, which means that beat Days Gone, Dreams, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Bloodborne, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Right? Bloodborne, yeah. Hate to Good. say it. Bloodborne Reviews for this caters to a more refined... <laughs> Well, it came out with less people had PS4s. Less people had PS4s then. A lot less PS4s in the wild. And more people had jobs. And more people, yeah. Yeah, yep. very true. Also, oh, yeah. to get ahead of the correction, looks like the battle system is basically suit-coded for... Nice. Yeah! Oh, nice. Excellent. I mean, if it ain't Excellent. broke, you know? Yeah. The reviews for Ghost of Tsushima were kind of up and down. Why did this game sell so spectacularly well? Because we've been hungry for samurai games for years. Like, yeah, Have we got we? Neo, we got Sekiro. <laughs> Dude, when Assassin's Creed was going in its prime, that's all 
anyone wanted. It is all any we. It's like Neo wanted us to do this, Jed. Yeah. It's like uh, give us an open world I feel like samurai game. I feel oversaturated on samurai. Now games, we do. Honestly. Now it's now we yeah. finally now we finally like this is the culmination of that. Because three years ago everyone wanted it. Now we have but, too yeah. many of them. And yeah. this game was in development for what five years. This game took forever to yeah. come out. It's also because it's open world, and how long mm-hmm. have people been asking for a feudal Japan themed Assassin's Creed? <laughs> Forever. Yeah. I, I, I think they just stepped in and filled that need. There was such a yep. desire for that type of specific type of samurai game, open world, whether open world mm-hmm. ninja and samurai, because you're playing stealthy too, so you can do either or. And people were like, "Well, you, sorry, Ubisoft, you missed the boat. You know, yeah, missed the boat. You did the punch. Get it." <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was really bad. But yeah, I think that's part of the appeal is that the, the setting, um, open world, and that it is slash samurai slash ninja stuff in an open world environment. And it looks beautiful. Yeah, because even Sekiro is not fully samurai and Neo is like segmented levels. And it's hardcore as hell is Neo. Like this is way more accessible. Oh, yeah. So. They, have a, they have like an easy mode on this. So mm-hmm. people just want to enjoy it. And there's... it. The, the, the nature of the game just encourages you to explore. I think the narrative is a little bit more, it, it's a more straightforward narrative. So I, I think it's definitely, you know, the Kurosawa influence that they're, they're going for with it. I just think it just speaks to a wider audience and thus just invites more people to, to partake in it. I am thrilled compared to Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon sold 2.6 million units, just 0.2 more across his first two weeks. So again, Tsushima pulled that off in three days. And this is not comparing it to, obviously, old IPs, Last of Us, God of War, Uncharted, right. NAC. Um, uh, because, as well, we well know... The first NAC. The Last of Us... Uh, the first NAC... Wait, the first NAC was on PS4. Was oh, somebody... Oh. Yeah, yeah NAC, was, NAC 1 was PS4. NAC like, near launch. First yeah. game. Wow. Oh, okay. So yeah, first, beat, first, first launch PS4. Game. It beat NAC. That quick NAC correction. Thank you, Blood. Uh... The Last of Us Part Two, as we know, is the fastest selling PS4 exclusive ever, selling four million units in its first three days. So, by comparison, get out of here. But uh, I've been seeing nothing but Tsushima photos on Twitter, just nonstop. The, like, Best photo mode of all time. D- did that have anything to do with it? Is that just kind of cre- increasing the jolly vibes of the game, or do you think that I mean, really not at sales? that speed? Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think this. A lot of this probably just comes down to the situation that that we're in you know where people are just they're they're hungry for good entertainment and long entertainment and this game looks like it's high quality and you know it's scratching those itches like like huber said in and i think really you know there's not anything like that equivalent across either you know nintendo or xbox right now you know like paper mario launched the same day and i'm sure that's doing bonkers as well but it's an entirely you know different vibe you know there, there's some crossover there but it's you know it's it yeah like it's not doing what Tsushima is doing you know it's a very <laughs> different thing so I, I i think it's just hitting that big open world niche and that samurai niche and you know and that high quality triple a cinematic experience you know that you know we had last of us but otherwise there's not too many of those coming out right now i do still think though that photo mode is a huge benefit for this game and and yeah. has driven sales for sure because every time those photos are are shown on twitter everyone's like oh my god this game's so beautiful like it screenshots really well someone saw one i took and was like yo i, I had never even heard it somehow i'd never heard of this game and they went and got it like so i definitely think it it impacts it but like you were saying blood not at that speed not that initial I mean, yeah. it certainly helps yeah word of mouth advertising to have yeah. a yeah. beautiful way to share photographs Huber, we're Beat devolving into quibby. the screenshot era. It's screenshots all over again. Mm-hmm. But now we do them backwards. Now we see the game in motion. We see the trailers. You know, we play it ourselves a little bit, you know, and then finally, oh, like when people are really, really wowed is when it's frozen in time and you just zoom well, in right on his eyeball. Like that's really when. Well, that's actually that the kind of funny thing, too, is because in a way, you know, kind of funny. shut up. Yeah. The, see, uh, blood sort of funny, you know, a little bit funny, please. We don't you know. <laughs> the. Yeah, you know, the the ind- one of the industry, one of the things the industry got poked on a lot, you know, ten years or so ago was quote unquote bull shots, right? Mm-hmm. Like you would get these photos of these games in the magazines. The games look amazing, and then you play the game. They don't look anything like that, you know, because they're using a higher, you know, uh, resolution renders or you know, close up 
on models that couldn't be in those situations or whatever, right? And so what ended up happening is then we moved into this era where most screenshots that we get in press kits now look like garbage. And I have to like hunt through 30 screenshots to find the one or two that I could actually use. <laughs> what kind but of shots did you say they were called? Bull shots. Bull shots. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said hole and I was like <laughs> Bloodworth. <laughs> um, and, but essentially photo mode allows uh, developers to kind of have the best of both worlds because people can make their own quote unquote bull shots and change all the lighting and, and, and depth of field and everything. And the developers aren't going to call it out on it because you know, they know it's a photo mode. They know that when you play the game, it's not going to look like that. So love yeah, it. It's, it's funny. Platinumed it last night. Nice. Love, nice. It. love this game. One of my favorite new games, new IPs ever. I'm ready for so many of these games. Like however long it takes five years later, let's go again. <laughs> you and millions of other people, Huber. Mm -hmm. Blood, you recently said that you don't think this game could have a sequel. Um, just for historical purposes? Like, you can't... Um, well, no, I was asking whether it could because I haven't played it. Um, so, yeah, I just didn't know that if this would be... Some, if the story would really be one that would make sense or if it would come to, like, a very, like, firm conclusion. Huber, can this blood... Can this... Uh, can this blood... Can this game have of a course. sequel? You can go so many ways, you know, I'm not talking about story or anything. Right. You can go so many ways. Uh, there's so many different era, different ways and, and people and places. And you can you can do a lot. The samurai were on for a really long time. So I definitely think there's a ton of directions this franchise can go. Is this the last great game of the PlayStation 4? Well, Good question. I think it might be. Seems like it, right? Oh, is it? Else is coming yeah, because... They keep pushing that. Does, does Cyberpunk count? Does that count? Oh, Cyberpunk probably counts, yeah. Like it's Cyberpunk so is a future. I mean, it's not first party. It's, yeah, it's so I mean, so future. I, I guess that's what the, what's the question, because, like, yeah, there will be like, yeah, there will exclusive. Be more games that compete with this, but first party, probably not. Yeah, because they don't want to do cross-gen with their first party stuff. They said mm -hmm. they want to push everyone on the PS5, so. But, I mean, never say never. Maybe there's something that comes out that, uh, is, hey, Persona 6, maybe it's on PS4 and PS5, and uh, it's a yes. Sony exclusive. 5 was cross-chain, right? But only on PS3, PS4, and in Japan. Now, and in Japan. Uh, it only came on PS3 in Japan, I think. Mm. Maybe. Hmm. I forget. Well, but well, we'll more of the, well, more of half of the people that bought Tsushima on PS4 already on PS5, and so they're just going to get that on PS5. Will, will the PlayStation 4 ever reach $2.4 million in three days? Ever again. Probably not. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think know. so. It's fine. I just, Finale. It's just not something, you know, it's really not something Sony's going to say. If you're like me, you're hungry for gaming discourse. It just feels like no one's talking about video games. You know what I mean? You know, I turn on <laughs> the YouTube. I go to, I go to listen to podcasts. You know, I follow Twitter. And it's just, it's such a small market. It's such a small, there's only so many opinions each day, each week, each month, each year about video games. So thank goodness was announced in this last week that G4 is coming back in 2021. <laughs> so weird. And all of us that work there are like, what? <laughs> it originally shut down six years ago. It's being brought back by Comcast, uh, supposedly led by Tucker Roberts, who is the president of Comcast's Spectacore. Spectacore sounds like a Pokemon gaming division. And he's also the president of the Philadelphia Fusion from the Overwatch League. Oh, Funny. Who all worked at G4? I was going to point at Huber, but Blood, you were at G4 for a little bit? Yeah, I was there with Hoffman. That's uh, me and Hoffman came over to GT. Yeah, Blood was time. like a real employee. I was just an intern. Final uh, intern. G4 didn't really have too many real employees. That's not true. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, here we, now we're getting into it. I wonder yeah. how many real employees I got now. I mean, <laughs> shall see. Yeah, yeah it was kind of that was kind of the thing that was what was weird about it is because like I worked on a season of Cheat with Hoffman and... Um, Oh, what was her name? Anyways. Uh, oh, Kristen Holt. That's it. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and anyways, uh, so, but once the season was done, then you were quote unquote laid off, but it was really just a matter of whether they ordered another season or, you know, whether another show got a season ordered and then you could try to get on staff for that show or whatever. But yeah, it's crazy TV stuff. 
I mean, Viacom, it, you know, Viacom, if you edit for them, you know, you just sign a new deal memo every three to right. six months. And it's like, you've been laid off and just hired again for another deal memo. And it's just like, all right. Yeah, I think it's really weird, Jones, because remember you were talking about um, GTTV and how that was like such a big thing with people like getting the just, oh, you're on TV. That's the let's go. Come over. Yeah. And I feel like nowadays nobody watches or has tv everyone just either streams or watch things on mm. online so it seems like tv is kind of the smaller like well, that's the thing I'm crowd. About, i had assumed when they said g4 was coming back that it was going to be like a youtube channel like a patreon or something Got but if it. comcast is involved no i don't think that's it because he just oh, i didn't know man, comcast no. was involved so like that means it's on tv and that means yeah. this is a crazy idea yeah, TV is like So yeah, I'm weirded old. out because I thought they confirmed, A, it was not going to be a TV channel. That was going to be a website slash YouTube Twitch type thing. That and I thought they actually, And I thought they said some of the people coming back, but I have not seen any follow-up on that. And some people were saying that wasn't correct. The, they were saying they were getting like Morgan Webb and, and Sessler back. No, and I was like, didn't know about that. And I was like, think. wait, what? No, 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 I don't think that. that I don't, so I don't know what's true and what, what I people think were just that, like. I think the reason why those fingers were pointed is they did tease X play and Attack of the Show in their promo because mm. you know they probably have you know they well, have they the rights to all of their show the names. Promo so much as they they also tweeted from those accounts. They, like, oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. Sorry, sorry. The promo was very short, uh, but you got you know Kevin and Olivia from X play and Morgan and Adam from Attack of the Show. All four of them are like. Great, cool. Sounds fun. You know, certainly Olivia Munn, I think, would be probably the yeah. hardest get out of Olivia all of those. Olivia Munn is just not like, coming uh -uh. back. Yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not a chance. That's okay. Thanks for that, though. I, I, I would not imagine Sessler going back either. But even if you have Huber, you know, if you got TV programs, you got TV networks, like, they also have YouTube channels. They also have content that they are making for YouTube. And so, basically, we can just count on getting a ton of content, you know, from this group. Uh, any, any, any fun stories, Blood or Huber? Anything to share? Any anecdotes to share from G4? Any, any uh, emotions uh, rising upon this news? I was just the last intern. It was me and a couple other people. And I just always like to say, you know, shout out to Blair Herder. He was the host of X-Play at the time, and he was just the nicest person ever we were so far away in a windowless room mm -hmm. as the interns and he would always take the time to come over sit down with us chat ask how we're doing oh just yeah g4 really... moved by that point too yeah because yeah, you guys just, were just closer a... mid-city right mm -hmm. is it the brown building across from sag yep across from our old right device? across there right yeah. across there so just really really nice nice guy and then i remember capturing for the Miss of Pandaria review, mm. uh, and this was like my first ever anything in the video game industry. So then I called Brad and was like, dude, let's play together so you're in the game. So like he, Brad's character <laughs> and I think my character too are in that G4X play Miss of Pandaria review. Right. <laughs> it was like so cool. We were like, yeah. Oh, I got I got a little hype there. Brad said he was in it. And I was like, oh, I got to dig up that video. And like, well, oh, his yeah, just his character. Just his wow character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my first um, sub two hour <laughs> review edit, I think, at Game Trailers. Uh, yes. <laughs> Take a bow, Ian. You cut it in what, two and a half hours? I think an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, Isn't that the one where you just have like a minute long clip going at, at a time? I, like I a couple of MMOs, for MMOs, so MMOs you can pull it off. Yeah, because. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Patrick gave it to me at like 5.30 and we ended at 7. Uh, and he was like, I was like trying to find footage and stuff. He's like, it's an MMO, dude. Just do whatever. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Blood, can we just do the one clip test one time? I got the, I still haven't cut Super Hot yet. Can I just do one clip for Super Hot? And we'll just see, we'll test. We'll see how, if it if it bottoms out, if it only gets 500 views, then we know it was a mistake. Who wants to get in the future? I just think of the time we could save, you know? Uh, if you write, if you wrote the review and played a clip that like fit everything you were saying in perfect time. It'd be like it'd be like Hitchcock. It'd be like rope. Dude, right. <laughs> plan it out. It'd be it'd be actually it like really like, hard, but it would be super know, cool. I want to try to do this with Let's a review. Do it. Let's yeah, do it. dude. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. What's up, bud? Oh, well, yeah, I, I was. Uh, yeah, you had asked us about stories earlier, so we, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so Huber, you were you were probably there after. I mean, did they go digital? Were they ever on like a digital thing where you're like naming files or were you still on tapes? It was people? like a digi tape thing. Right. Yeah, okay. it was weird. Like these big cassette things, you stuck them in, recorded. 
Sounds like you're probably on similar equipment, um, mm -hmm. but probably upgraded because you had to have been on HD by then. Uh, but yeah, with uh, for for me with Cheat, I was there when the Wii and the PS3 came in, so that was real fun uh, because number one, they delivered the Wii with an armored car, uh, <laughs> and then we had like this shoot in the conference room where we were like comparing the size of both of them because you know the Wii was pretty small and the PS3 yeah. was gigantic and so there's just like all of these comparison photos and things uh but basically uh old old G4 I don't know if it was it probably wasn't the original building but it was one of the ones that they were in for a long time so they were like cubicles and offices and edit bays along the outside but then sort of in the center almost in like a lobby there was what I would almost call a fish tank there was a room that was pretty much all glass walls and a very like high security door room. that only certain staff members had a key card that would let them into this door and that was the capture room so it was just stations of uh monitors where you could hook in the the systems and then tape decks the old with you know the purple mm. case tapes uh and that's how we would capture you know we would we'd bring in the, the the console we would plug it in and we hit record and go for it and you know my job with cheat was basically to record all of twilight princess uh the week before the week came out and to awesome. just like write as many like strategy related things and boss battles and secrets whatever i could find and it was so Sick. funny because Everybody that walked in there was like, ah, ah, you know, like you get like new armor and things like that, and nobody wants to see it. And they're like, can't you do this somewhere else? I'm like, no, I, I have to, I have to do it here, because yeah, there was another room, but it was for X play or something, so I couldn't use it for that extended period of time. And another thing that I didn't realize, because I had headphones on and the Wii was still so new, is that sound effects were coming out of the speaker, and everyone else in the room could hear like the ball and chain and stuff. Fantastic. Like all day but i literally they, finished that game with like a stack of like 23 tapes geez. that then had to all be logged in and like cataloged for their library which was this huge like intern job yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was like one of these future proofing things where like if they ever needed to pull from that game there was the log you know and and they could you know however many years g4 lasted they probably used those tapes do you figure they just threw them all away when G4 went under? Probably. I have no idea what they do with that kind of thing. Yeah. People seem pretty excited about it because people have a lot of fond memories of G4, but Ian, I'm with you. This is crazy. I mean, and if it's a YouTube channel, it's a great idea. If it's a TV channel, if it's a TV channel, it's insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's a show on another channel, okay. But yeah, if it's like a online thing, then it's fine. But if they're trying to do G4 again, that's a weird idea. <laughs> it seems to me like Rock Band and Guitar Hero trying to make a comeback. It's like, I'm sure it'll sell. I'm, I'm excited. I'll check it out. But I just don't know. I, I have to imagine they're expecting big things out of this. And from this announcement, I discovered about Ven. Did any of you know about Ven before Not I just said that it. word or... <laughs> Potentially well, you, you had it. It was in the Q and A. Yeah, yeah. You That's mentioned it the other day. It. A video but. game entertainment and news network. Mm -hmm. Then is a new kind of TV network for the streaming generation, aimed at gaming, pop culture, and esports audiences. Beta launching August 2020, live from Los Angeles, beta? and later three world <laughs> beta launching. And later, three World Trade Center in New York. Venn will be distributed across a broad range of media platforms and offer original programming produced in-house and in partnership with some of the biggest names and creators across industries. Venn's founded by Ariel Horn and Ben Cousin. Ariel is a four-time Emmy Award winner and pioneer of televised esports, a former executive at NBC Sports. Ariel led production efforts for BlizzCon and was behind the world broadcast success of League of Legends at Riot Games, generating audiences over 100 million worldwide. Ben is a gaming industry veteran with decades of experience in interactive media and new media. Ben worked in brand marketing on over $1 billion in product sales on franchises such as Medal of Honor, The Sims, Fear, and more. He's the former head of new media Fear. and strategic alliances for Vivendi Universal Games. Ben and Ariel can't be wrong, right? So wait, All the success is it... they've had. Ven you... is made by Ben, is what I'm getting. <laughs> ben, yeah, Ben's like bringing us Ben. <laughs> So it, at first, what you said sounded like this was a TV channel, but then yeah. it said it was various 
formats. So across it's not... a broad range of media platforms. What's huh. broad? Three is three broad or is four? You got to go to four for internet, to be phone, broad? Or computer, phone. <laughs> yeah, like broad, Twitch. broad has to be yeah. like <laughs> selling the programming <laughs> yeah. to YouTube, Twitch, Hulu. Like they probably have uh, apps on like yeah. every device, yeah. or so, something like that. They need a Netflix show. If so this, this is, is a TV <laughs> channel and G Four will have some shows on it, it would make more sense. Sure, that would so, make a lot of sense. So Damiani, is the difference that they're just like announcing this before it happens? Like we don't the G4 is not happening until 2021. It's like why are you telling us now? Like if you watch a ton of different content creators, I think much more certainly than I do, you know, across the the gaming space. If you're going to make content, you just make content. Like you might announce like hey, I'm going to do it and start next week. How long did it take us to do a podcast? Like 5 days after we like yeah. launched and then like we announced like a couple, you know, like a week or so before. This is just a is that the difference here? Is just the lead time, just the amount being spent before we see any part of it? Is that, Maybe is that what's they different here? To- Maybe they wanted to gauge the reaction, like, mm. they had runway before spending a lot of dough on this thing to be like, if everyone makes a meme out of it and says it's a terrible idea, we won't do it. <laughs> Even this, though, I imagine, is a lot of money's being spent. Oh, I'm sure they've already sunk a lot, yeah. Well, they yeah. can't do a lot right now. <laughs> right. I mean, 2021 is kind of when they can start. <laughs> That's just when, yeah, things open again. It sounds just like a more ambitious. What was the thing? Uh, I had to look it up. VRV is this uh, like app network thing that combined like anime, like Funimation, Crunchyroll, but also did like Rooster Teeth stuff. They they were yeah, trying to bring the like, gaming, Teeth. anime, all these programs. A lot of the catalog left uh, over the years. Like I think Funimation completely pulled out of it when Sony bought stake in them or increased their stake in the company. But it sounds something like that where they. Uh, they're just gonna bring in a whole bunch of. Different, they said like esports. I mean, I'm so, like they're just put a whole bunch of different content. I'm gonna guess esports is gonna be like their the strongest thing they're gonna lean on, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I it, it could it could succeed. I don't know. I like this is hard to predict this type of stuff. I just feel the more th- this feels like it feels like when it comes to video games and the video and video game content creation. The more you herald something and then the more you try and make it professional slash announce like this is like pay attention to this. This is something that should be big, especially when it crosses over to esports, the, the, the esports or streaming realm. That's something you can't really force. Uh, I, I mean, maybe someone's figured out the formula. I mean, the, the, their backgrounds sound very impressive. So maybe they have a, a little bit of a better understanding. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I just get really hesitant to put much stock into something like this and i i don't first i mean who knows how long it could be around it could be around for many many years i just don't know how successful it's actually going to be and it this type of stuff just kind of confuses me other than yeah people want to get in on this they want to make money off of this like video game content creation it's a big thing it's always it gets growing it's expanding so it's esports why not get a piece of it but i just this is the type of stuff i feel like I, it's just over my head sometimes. I feel yeah, so what, lost. I, what, what I loved about original G4 and X Plane stuff was that it was a lot of variety in a truncated, digestible format. So, you know, G4 would have the cheat, cheat or whatever, like you were saying, Bloodworth, and just they would have reviews. They would do like, I remember the DVD show on Attack of the Show. They would just have all this variety on with one place to go. Uh, but isn't that what the internet is now? You know, you can get all of this everywhere. But I guess on the flip side, like with esports specifically, everyone who covers esports is like a specialist, and it feels yeah. like if you're covering esports, that's all you're doing. So cool. maybe G4 is trying to get that old vibe of just like having a little bit of everything. Reading more but, about this Venn thing too, Huber. Uh, this might be interesting because, like, what you're talking about with like doing that variety stuff. It's like there's a TechCrunch interview just gleaming some stuff off of here. They've in, Ven envisions itself as being the MTV of like video game like television. Essentially, like they want to go back to the golden days of MTV with like TRL old, and like old that, MTV. That, yeah, old MTV, old MTV, and yeah. the Ven part of it also stands for like Venn diagram, which supposed to be an intersection of gaming, fashion, and music. 
<laughs> so I think they're trying to make this more of a, a cultural thing than maybe I, I feel like this is meant to have like a broader appeal than maybe what I was thinking at first that this is going for a more surface level thing that's like more mainstream and even within the didn't they try to do this games. recently and it failed with G4 remember that a few years back didn't they try to do like G4 something I just remembered this now mm, I don't remember of- they were they were gonna revive it a few years ago as kind of an all encompassing thing, and it didn't happen. If if you can remember, I love the I totally correction forgot. that I could get will either be yes, Huber was right, and here are the details, or now Huber's that's yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, was that, a, uh, that was a dream. Yeah, it might have been a dream. But, so, but yeah, the and, and getting the old the old guests on the old shows too, like I feel like kind of funny and stuff just does that now. Like anytime you want to see. Oh, sure someone from a big game they're just on on the internet everywhere so i just wonder what g4 is is bringing to the table that we can't Dude, get anywhere else yeah man this Venn thing is like serious business uh co-founder of riot games mark merrill uh mike and andy morheim co-founders of blizzard entertainment uh oh, the kevin lind co-founder of twitch all uh all investors including epic games team liquid and niantic Oh, so there's a lot of serious a lot of money behind this. this. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, this seems like a serious attempt, like for sure. Like they, they seem like they're to, they they like they have the expertise to try and pull this off. But I that's, say, that's what I was. Is... <laughs> that's what I was gonna say is like the the lady being, like in charge of the League of Legends stuff. Like those shows are bananas, and like such huge productions. And so, like, that's the thing that makes me think, like, okay, they, they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't have, like, a pretty confident strategy. Um, and I guess it's just, we'll see if it pays off. The, the thing I wonder is, kind of like what Huber said before, is, like, is there a demand for something like this? Because I don't think, I think that we've moved away from, like, Gen Z especially, like, people don't care anymore about, like, what channel something is on they just care about like this one person is doing this thing that i like and most of the time it's not even on tv and it's like so that kind of like like saying you want to be the mtv of whatever it's like okay that places it into a certain age range kind of a similar demographic that we are in where it's like a little older clientele uh who would remember when mtv was good uh so yeah it's a weird it's a weird proposition. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like they just want to be on all the major platforms that, I mean, it'll be like the Venn Twitch channel, it'll be the Venn whatever, like YouTube channel. There's going to be like Hulu, Roku, like they were listening like everything. Uh, what's, right. I don't even know, what's Pluto? Pluto, like. It's a I, I, I will say they have Some the resources <laughs> to pull it off though. Like yeah. to, to be able to do this kind of thing and to have the resources and the names they have, like that counts for something. For well, sure. I mean, it, it, there have a few brands have been mentioned, and it's uh, the one before, after Riot that you mentioned. Uh, Blizzard? Definitely, oh, Vivendi and stuff. Like, yeah, Vivendi. That kind of stuff makes me think, okay, how intrinsic to this this programming will these brand relationships be? Like, will this effectively be a, a Riot, Blizzard, Vivendi mouthpiece? Um, or will it just be, mm, you know... Sure. Like, will it be, you know, a very specific marketing branch of, like, co-owned by, or co-financed by, like, six different companies? What if they have exclusive rights? Specifically, where the investor's not Blizzard, right? Yeah, they just were listed as former co-founder. I mean, because they... I see, I see. Because they couldn't MLB this or something, or create, like, NFL, or, like, retain the entire rights to like Overwatch and League of Legends, right? Could they couldn't do that, or could could they do that? I mean, is, is they that could on? Potentially the... make a contract, sure, but who knows? Because that would be the move that would be nuts. Is like, hey, if you ever want to watch Overwatch competitive or League of Legends competitive, guess what? You have to watch it on G four. But I mean, that Damn, is it's... that is a that is an avenue that they could do to make a lot of money. Like if Ven, if if Ven got the exclusive contract for the overwatch league for i mean that would be league of wild. legends does its own thing but if they had some kind of like special league of legends content or something like that would finance this thing i think like because blizzard seems to have been bleeding chips a little bit on the overwatch league they kind of pulled back 
made it go mm. city by city. Uh, so yeah, if, if they had an external partner that was handling some of the nitty gritty with production of the streams and videos and stuff, I could see that working. Yeah, they're saying their champ their content will be won't be holding to a single title, franchise or publisher. I already talked about like they're not gonna be they're gonna be on multiple platforms. Um, yeah, they're 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 saying here they're gonna recruit t- sorry recruit top tier talent, um, and they're they're gonna do sponsor based streams and formats like the traditional network environment. That that's a little interesting that they're bringing in like sponsors like that. But more this, or less than two weeks before Ninja's on. They mean they <laughs> mentioned Ninja <laughs> in here about potentially right, day one. <laughs> going after people like this. So they but, but they don't want their their goal is I guess not to go like independent sponsorship deals with individual streamers. They're going after groups that represent like agencies and stuff like that. They're they they're, they're, they're I think they're seeing the bigger picture perhaps. Mm. Uh, um, complete global saturation. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how this bears out. Because mm-hmm. it could either quibby or it could be like the right. next big thing. Well, I just right. want that launch lineup so we can all make bets on what shows are going to get canceled right away. Because that's like yeah. one of the most ruthless things about TV is when a show's like episode one, episode two, gone. And you're like, oh, right. <laughs> like all these people that worked on it. <laughs> Dude, this article is from September of last year. Jeez, this has been the works for a while then. Huh. Yeah, but that's that's what's kind of, yeah, what's what's funny about it is is like Brandon was saying, we never heard about it this until g4 made their announcement and then everyone is like oh well remember that other thing and I'm like no <laughs> i don't <laughs> but and, like and there, and, and, so. yeah and everything being announced so far in advance we're really not going to know until there's like a thing to watch like that's when we can actually right. get excited about it or they have some kind of presentation they do some kind of press conference and just literally well, go and, through you know what what we're going to see in a way like the companies like this if, if sort of if they're doing their job right you don't ever really hear about them like the end user doesn't care about ven they just watch the thing they like right. on the channel they get. Yeah, you know. Uh, the the thing I was talking about earlier, aborted rebrand as Esquire Network. That's what they were oh, trying to do. Esquire yeah. Network. They're trying to do the whole we're for like young oh, men actually, watching. I, re- I remember stuff. that because yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a while back. But I, I remember because it, it was funny. It actually made me change my 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 Facebook profile because they just like changed like the name of their facebook page or whatever from g4 to esquire and so like it, in like my work history it said like previously worked at esquire i'm like no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> to get rid of this <laughs> is esquire gonna be there like skate four like is it all the comments and all the videos are just gonna get esquired bro <laughs> <laughs> we shall see what will be the fate of either of these networks they are spending so yeah. much money i can just sit back with the with some popcorn see who so wins who money. loses maybe they'll both lose we shall see so we've talked about successful Kickstarters. We've talked about the most successful new IP on the PlayStation 4, the one that sold the fastest. Lots of people are excited about these two networks that are going to be on the way. Grounded and Fall Guys also had Yo. a very good week. And much like these huge Kickstarter and much like you know a bunch of people playing Ghost of Tsushima, which is a game that I dearly love, unfortunately have not had a ton of time to play, I'm... I want to get to the bottom of why Grounded and Fall Guys have done really well. These are games that we both played. Huber, you went to, you know, you played a little bit in the beta of Fall Guys. We streamed Grounded this week. Uh, mm-hmm. Grounded from Obsidian Entertainment is currently on Xbox Game Pass and Steam Early Access. You got the crossplay. It works. We have Worse. done unsuccessful crossplay tests as of late. Although I heard reports that other people were not mm-hmm. so lucky. So mm. yeah, well, there's Some a people difference. Are having a hard time with matchmaking just in general. But there's yeah. a difference yeah. between off and on working and just straight up not going to happen. Uh, a surprising amount of accessibility when it comes to spiders. Uh, lots of the options there. Even in checking what it looks like in the options, you can like hit a button. Really? That, I didn't it, see it'll, it. it'll, it'll, you can change the settings, but it won't show you how the spider's changing based can, on the settings. Can you do that with ants choose. also? I don't think so. No, I think it's ants, just ants, spiders. The ant in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Jones, that gives me more nightmares than any spider. It's Those all hairy. freak me out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, a freaky, that's freaky looking freaky. ant. But yeah, the yeah it's the arachnophobia setting, and uh, as Kotaku I think had a nice gif of it where there's just like eight different levels where they just like progressively like remove the so legs, cool. and then if you set it further, then it removes the 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 mandibles, and then if you get further, then it like gets rid of eyes and then like changes the shape of the head, and then at the highest level, it's just this weird like Kirby blob. It's like a flying snowman. It's literally yeah. just two white balls and like eyes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like... 
That's really funny. Which becomes like its own kind of horror thing. Yeah, yeah I right. guess. I it don't know if I see a prisoner. If I saw that floating through the the blades of grass, I would be a little concerned. We were our minds weren't necessarily blown away by this. I was, you know, I, I love checking out stuff like Ark. I love to check out, but I was like, I can't get into this. Like I love like, you know, starting out with very little, building things, crafting things, building a fort, you know, uh, you know, acquiring armor. But we had a pretty good time playing. This. I really liked it. Yeah. Are we not surprised by the success of Grounded? Was this just something that we got a kick out of, or do we think when this Looks comes good. out of early access, they're going to have enough to show and, and possibly get another round of people that are excited about it? Yeah, they got. Um, there's some rust they got to shake off yet, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean it. It delivered on the the trailer. It's like a fun, cute little concept. It also like something I like about Grounded, is I feel like the expectations were appropriately set. Like Obsidian makes jokes about the game in the trailers for this game. You know, like they say, if you're waiting for the next biggest game, wait for Cyberpunk. But if you want the smallest game, play Grounded, and that kind of sets your expectations at a level where it's like. You, I was ready to like forgive the little weird things that happened with this game and just have fun, which was nice. Yeah. Well, also, first day of early access. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's just yeah. what you have to expect. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, Brandon, what what was yeah what was the details on the the success that you're saying? Because I saw you know like on Fall Guys side, I saw them getting like high ranked on Steam and all this, yeah. but I didn't see specifically what what grounded was touting as uh being successful i'm seeing a lot of people checking it out i'm seeing a lot of high profile streamers excited about it i'm seeing a lot of love thrown at obsidian um and i'm just yeah for for again it being early and for it being in the state that it was when we played it um for it just to get basically kind of where i'm going with this we can talk about fall guys and get into those details later huber but are we seeing a late july august that would have been different had we not been in a pandemic would we do you have groups like grounded and fall guys who are like oh, there's just way more eyeballs on us right now because we would have been playing Cyberpunk or close to it. You know, like there were, there would still have been some games that were supposed to come out this summer and just a general entertainment. No one's going to movie theaters. Like, do we think that Grounded and Fall Guys got lucky or do we think, you know, the success that they've had this week was just because these are fun games? I think obviously there's a combination, you know, we're all, we're all at home playing and I think multi multiplayer games specifically benefit the most. Everyone playing together, uh, streamers partnering up and streaming the game together, uh, streaming with your viewers. It's just, it's, you know, definitely benefits this situation more than other, other single player games. Um, and I think just being shrunk down in a backyard is like, I grew up thinking about that all the time or like being shrunk down and living in little like dollhouses dude i love that kind of stuff like i i saw i think it was maybe popular science i saw some article where they've actually like made this little miniature camera that they can strap onto the back of a beetle and so now cool. they're gonna, like get this footage from like beetle live you <laughs> what there's an uh, amazing movie from i think the late 70s don't quote me on that but it's called phase four and it's uh, I think Saul Bass directed it, who uh, did all the title sequences for a lot of Hitchcock movies. I think that he directed it. Not certain. But uh, the movie rules, first of all. But Sick. It's, it's ants. You might be freaked out by it. Yeah, but they that freaks used, me out. They used actual ants and basically like puppeted ants, uh, live ants mostly, I think. But they're giant ants. Um, and if you can, watch Phase 4 and then find there's like a lost ending and it's Whoa. actually phase four. Shit gets crazy. Anyway, awesome. Ant, they went into film ant tunnels and stuff, and that Dang, is, is crazy. Uh, Reminds me is. of like uh, Fantastic Voyage, also. Yeah. You know, getting shrunk down, going like, when's the Fantastic Voyage Inner space, video game dude. coming out? Man, <laughs> space is uh, it is Saul Bass, by the way. Ah, <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, I saw that. Yeah. Wait, is Inner Space a game? A Fantastic Voyage game? What? Inner Space is a... Uh, the concept? Inner Space is a movie. Yeah. Ever seen Inner Space, man? No, and oh, it's like Fantastic oh. Voyage? Yeah. yeah. You should see that. Oh, man. You'd love Inner Space. You've also... What is this movie? I've never you heard of this movie. What? Dennis Quaid goes inside... You have not heard of this? Dennis Quaid goes inside... Oh, wow. Um, Nobody oh, tell him about oh, Osmosis Jones. Yeah, short. 
to stop yeah, t- yeah just go watch it here go watch okay. it yeah, it's a weird dude, movie dude old <laughs> disney <laughs> like weird 80s disney dude, uh, uh, dude i think it's 80s martin short meg ryan kevin meg mccarthy ryan. and dennis quaid here okay yeah. that's all you all gotta right. know uh, in a it's like that and fantastic voyage are probably the two most parodied like shrunk down going into a body to fix a thing dude things. cool okay yeah. So this awesome. is why we all like Grounded, because we've just seen all of these films, <laughs> and no one's really been able to tap into it before. Uh, well, there have been a lot of different attempts. I mean, there's Army Men, there's a lot of, I think there's even like sure. another racing game that came out, but there's been a, a bunch of Micro like, Machines kind of have games, that vibe. Micro Machines, yeah. 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 We're always um, in the bedroom, Dust Bunnies. Is, we're in the Counter Strike map. We're drinking yeah. bad water. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sin Ant, which uh, Ian brought up, was kind of gets some of those vibes. Uh, I, I, I do think it's interesting to compare this to Bleeding Edge, though, right? Because it's a somewhat <laughs> similar situation. It's like, here is an Xbox Game Studios new new acquisition, right? They got Ninja Theory and Obsidian pretty close at the same time. Uh, if, it, if not even announced, maybe at the same time. Uh, and they both had these games already in development, and then they came out on Game Pass. Bleeding Edge just felt like nobody cared it didn't and, even feel like ninja theory cared i feel like sure. they themselves were like don't play this or but like you said grounded is just you know getting like lots of social media buzz and and people kind of feeling like they want to hop in and so i just I, yeah i wonder i wonder what really is going on differently there if it's just it, it's a lot of it's more marketing playful. size of Obsidian like bleeding edge was ninja theory or what bleeding edge was was serious playful you know it had like bombastic heroes but it was like so serious competitive shooter or you know competitive action game whereas grounded seems hop in yeah. low well, stakes low pressure like you said huber like multiplayer is huge right now but i also think cooperative multiplayer is yes. huge right now because people people are missing mm. that they're missing working together also like this takes everything you love from a bunch of survival games, does it fairly well, and puts it in a cool new environment. Like, I didn't want to stop playing during our group <laughs> And it's that, and that surprise, like, Ian, that I'm seeing much. a lot. I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitter yeah. that are like, I'm still playing this. You know, like, yeah. wow. Like, I actually got to the end of the story content and, like, was sad. <laughs> you know, like, I want yeah. more of this. Um, so I think that's the surprise, you know, blood that just a lot of people. I think maybe awesome. you kind of knew what to expect with Bleeding Edge. It was like, ah, oh, that kind of game. Where the, the, well, there definitely just is something really unique. I, I, like I again, I can, can draw comparisons to Minecraft and Ark and Fortnite, but um, it is it is its own weird thing. And again, I, I go back to the to the positive PR power of low expectations mm-hmm. because like there, there's a weird up. thing where it's like you want people to be interested in your game but not excited for it to a certain extent because then when they play it, they're pleasantly surprised. Word of mouth. And then you know, but I feel nothing like Bleeding to lose. Edge was sort of there. I don't think people had big expectations for people Bleeding had, Edge. People had, yeah. Bleeding Edge was I feel dead like on Bleeding arrival. Edge was just sort of written off, like. <laughs> well, because Bleeding well, Edge. Well, when the streamers, when the initial streamers streamed it too, they weren't even that impressed. So yeah. if you get like the core streamers yeah. starting so a game out. Bleeding Edge was was a too easily confused with that, uh, the other one, the Borderlands guys one, that Battle Cry. Which just failed. Oh, Battle, but Battle also, Battleborn. Although Battle Cry uh, was a game that got Battle canceled. Cry also, <laughs> Battle Cry was sick. the same thing. Yes. But like, uh, but this one, I forgot the name of it now. This is probably a huge thing. But um, the game Bleeding we're Edge. talking about. Grounded. Yeah, Bleeding Edge. Like oh, Bleeding Edge. Yeah. Bleeding Edge is a hero shooter. It feels like a me, like a, oh me, yeah, me too, me too mm-hmm. hero shooter but it's, at it's the not end a of the. It, well, no, I know, but like it feels okay. like a me shooting. too, but different. Uh, at the end of that fa- fad, you know, like that—that that was already gone and done by the time this finally came out, you know. Yeah. It seemed like to me. Where were where our expectations for? Where where were our expectations set for Fall Guys? <laughs> I think we definitely had a Sky much bigger, high. a much better reaction for, to Fall Guys than we did when we first saw it grounded. But Fall Guys did tremendously well, and <sighs> is a little less surprising to me because this seems like this is the Twitch game. This is your streaming game, mm-hmm. right? you know. 
Um, and it, you know, th there has been some interesting Twitch func functionality uh, announced for Hyperscape, uh, which is really interesting seeing, you know, like a, a community being built around that game. But this just seems kind of like the whole embodiment of like the idea of Twitch. You know, like I don't necessarily need to vote on anything or make anything happen in game. I can just watch people get annihilated in this game, and that'll be fun. Um, and everyone is welcome in Fall Guys. You know, Hyperscape is hardcore <laughs> as hell. Oh, an annihilated sniper like, from a thousand yards. You're a, you're either a professional watching the professionals or getting your ass shot from a mile away. Whereas every single person of all skill levels can jump into Fall Guys, know exactly what's going on, and have a competitively good time. So that, this, that really counts for something. This is from Media Tonic, who also made Gears Pop. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> and Murder by Numbers, uh, which is a smaller game, published by De oh. uh, Devolver. That sounds familiar. Yeah, Murder by Numbers, that's the, like, uh, mystery slash Picross game, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Hmm. Interesting team. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what a, what a weird little band of people. Uh, so yeah, you can go again. You can watch our grounded group stream if you want to see more of that game. But uh, Huber and I did an after the weekend uh, impressions video where we talked about this. And Huber made it to the end. He didn't win, but he made it didn't to the win. end. He only played it for an hour. I just played but one hour. Did you stop playing because you made it to the end? Were you like, okay, well, because I, I didn't. I got that last hexagon area. I don't need to. And it's because when I when I play with you guys and win, I don't want you to have ex an excuse to say, you know, <laughs> you were playing a bunch. That was the Do main reason. Uh, yeah, that was the just, you know, less than an hour. Damiani's going to destroy us all. So yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for that. They are cramming in another <laughs> beta weekend before the... Uh, Dude, uh, the only thing this on. game is missing is is private, private games and private lobbies, which hopefully comes down the line. Uh, because that is that is what is going to set it over the edge and make this thing just a ongoing Twitch phenomenon. Everything I played was so so fun. If you want to hear our impressions, check that check that video out. But you just said right now you didn't say this in impressions. You're changing your tune now, Huber. This is a game you <laughs> can get better at. This is you, you think your no, power has has Damiani can because Damiani <laughs> just finds a way yeah, to, no, uh, to use the game against itself and yeah. use the game against others. Right. <laughs> uh, Damiani, he's, he's Huber specifically said you can grab people. So yeah. if you like, if you want to lose, yeah, so you can like kamikaze a guy and just be like, no, you're not winning. You know, like, like you're gonna lose too, but and I'm just like, at least one of us is gonna grab. You Damiani can break every free, time. but let's find, let's, 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 let's find a way to PVP in this. I grabbed Damiani. Last time, um, but there's just something. It also just kind of has that Friday the Thirteenth. It's just it's 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 maybe not necessarily like a brand new concept. Obviously, it's a battle royale. It just kind of takes the the double dare American Gladiators vibe of a battle royale. But you know, just given that, I think we can also agree that you know, given how long it was when we first heard about these games, how they advertised themselves, how they presented, how they handed out codes, I think they handled their campaigns really well you know i think we got just enough of these games before people finally got their hands on them i just wonder if they would have gotten so much exposure in say a you know another year where you know a virus didn't come from china trying to kill all of us like if that maybe would have made this you know june july august span a little bit different and maybe the numbers wouldn't be so well the impressions wouldn't be so well for grounded on social media and the numbers wouldn't be so well on twitch for fall guys they also had the greatest, like, uh, remember Devolverland Expo came out and they're in the Devolver Showcase? Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, you go through E3 and you check out all the booths and Fall Guys has a booth in Devolverland Expo. It's really jolly, mm -hmm. really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's part of it too. It's just the lightheartedness of all this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we're seeing some of that pay off in, in that, um, you know, same with the Animal Crossing, you know, those things that just, they feel welcoming. They feel like people can have that uh, levity and that ability to just hop in. And I think grounded in a way, it's almost deceptive because there is a lot there to dig into and it's a lot deeper, but it still feels like, hey, you know, this is just a fun little cartoony game. Go out there and mm -hmm. fight the ants, you know. And then somebody like takes out half of your fort and you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. like, I didn't realize how attached I was to that water bin. Yeah. Damn. Uh, Love and Grounded was uh, 
Uh, Caleb Moran from uh, our Patreon. He said, Grounded releases this week an early access game preview, and it is not a genre I'm interested in, but with its inclusion in Xbox Game Pass, I decided to jump in for an hour. That single hour turned into a six-hour session, followed by another six or so hours the following day. I love building my base up, finding an awesome Battletoads reference, fighting bugs, and running the hell away from scary spiders. Despite being in game preview and having next to no story content, I'm having a blast playing, and my eyes have opened to these kinds of survival games. And this reminds me, Blood, of that excellent tweet from EDF about uh, somebody was a PC gamer that wrote a, yeah. a, a, a headline that said, please no more giant bugs in games. And EDF yeah. just quoted and said, no. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was, please make me stop killing giant bugs yeah. in games. Yeah, and, yeah, like I'm sick of fighting giant Earth bugs. Defense Force no. is like, no. More bugs. You just gotta have the settings in there to take away the scary legs and make them all floating snowmen. That's That part's interesting to me. Is it the legs that people don't like? Because to me it's like, the, the whole eyes. package, the eyes, the mandibles. We could spend Ugh. more time talking about it if Ben Moore was on the podcast, but he is not. <laughs> yeah. So we will move on. He's been, he's, been, he's been playing cyberpunk. It's true. Let's get those juicy impressions soon. Whoa. Ooh. Must be nice. Are we allowed to Duh. say that? Duh. Must be Again, nice. Again, the same, same demo people played earlier. Yeah. Same preview ah. content, but it's going to be Ben's Must take. be nice. If yeah. any of you said Flexing. it, I would be terrified, but if Bloodworth says it, I know it's okay. Yeah. Flexing uh, that 2080. Also this, week, on. also, this week, players spent $17.5 million during Pokemon Go Fest 2020. Pokemon Go is doing okay, everyone. Don't be worried. <laughs> Red Dead Online is adding a naturalist frontier pursuit in its newest update. I don't know if you recall, but uh, people were dressing up as clowns mm-hmm. because they were mad that there were no updates coming to Red Dead Online. <laughs> there you go. Naturalist you be, as in nudists? Now you can be a naturalist. I'm a, I no. bet that's exactly what the, it is. Uh, what does the, this mean? What is the PlayStation the store? The PlayStation Store graphic is the only thing I saw of this, and it looked like they were foraging like plants and stuff. Yeah. Isn't All that those... what a natural Naturist? Yeah. Is You're that a naturist? naturist. The, I don't know there's a word like naturist. From. No, there's a word like naturist that's like the fancy term for a nudist like so like a natural naturalist or naturist colonies or like i don't see colonies. i don't see no, damiani typing like right an now older word for biology i don't know if like he's looking this up <laughs> no jones no. what would it take to uh there. what would it take to get you to hop back into red dead uh another day of the week the analog pocket <laughs> ships on may of 2021 if you're not if you don't know the analog pocket is oh, a yeah. dope handheld that plays a bunch of different handheld mm. stuff and it looks beautiful and that is awesome. It finally is dated. Uh, we already said Ghost of Tsushima added a higher difficulty, so along with Naturist. other stuff. Naturist. There we go. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sergei Haskowet, who uh, I don't know if you recall, does not work for Ubisoft anymore. Apparently, canceled the King Arthur game while he was there. Wasn't a fan of that one, but uh, they were. That was in development at Ubisoft. Didn't happen. Blood Origin, mm-hmm. a Witcher prequel series, is coming to Netflix. I guess uh, uh, Witcher's got I some did. more lore there. Blood. I guess a lot of lore. Isn't that Witcher? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what this is about, but interesting. Ooh. I don't like Netflix, prequels. dude. Ride it. Ride that, that Witcher There's, hype train. Yeah. The thing is, is, the Witcher, it gets crazy when you start dealing into the, the lore of that. Like, why there are monsters here and everything, and, like, the spheres, the dimensions. Conjunction. Yeah. yeah, it's dimensions really weird. Over, and that's why there's magic and all of this stuff. And, you know, huh. and, yeah, you get into it at the end of Witcher 3, but it's it's... It's, it's wild. No Emmy nods for that Witcher, sadly. Oh. Uh, Cuphead's now on PS4. We thought it might be, and then we thought it wouldn't be, and then it was. Uh, is anyone mad? Uh, no. Oh, Good. Sure, is anyone mad? I'm sure somebody. Because <laughs> people get so no. like Once people get. Oh, I came to switch. Oh, I thought you meant people mad, get but, oh, people right. get so pissed where like Horizon and, and Death Stranding show up on PC uh, and everyone's pissed and it was like give me a Uber. break let everyone play everything. Don is furious. Uh, there is a this I mean. Damian, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a gift wrapped uh, friend code episode. There was a massive Nintendo Giga leak. Giga oh. leak. I mean, it would I know, be. I hear I'm just too, I'm too scared to cover it because I'm oh. too scared Nintendo's gonna like nuke everything <laughs> about all this stuff. There's too much to nuke, man. I'm seeing it everywhere. So much stuff. I mean, it's, came it's, out. it's, it's I'm, I'm I'm really happy. Nintendo all this stuff is it. coming out. I'm all for I'm all for a preservation and uh, yeah. transparency, like of knowing how things like the tricks and like. Learning about like betas slash, I mean, it's weird. The discussion about how everything in that era was called beta when it wasn't really technically beta stuff sure. is kind of interesting. But like early builds of these games that we only saw crappy screenshots of are now people are finding stuff. It's really cool. But at the same time, it was illegally obtained. It was through, it was through a hack. So it's like, 
Nintendo's going to come after this stuff. They're already playing whack-a-mole with the links to the leak, and I'm sure they'll go after videos and stuff at some point as well. well so. Go get those moles while they're still out risky. there. There's a ton of amazing SNES and N64 stuff that even the developers of those said games were like, what? <laughs> like, I've seen very little, I didn't but know I know that saw or the, haven't seen this in so many years. Or I saw the original first room in Ocarina of Time, yep. the concept room. Like, that was a cool mm. one. It's like, whoa! Yeah, the original Yoshi, and you know. Uh, oh, yeah, the Yoshi design. I did the, the, the Luigi the, and the Super Mario. Thing 64. Is the, yeah. the reason Super it's Mario World, it's a feather you get for the cape, is because originally it wasn't supposed to be a cape. Mario was supposed to grow wings. Like actual like angelic wings to fly oh, in Super Mario it's a, World. It's a bottomless pit, y'all. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah, we could we could spend a whole podcast talking about it. Junji Ito has been in contact with Hideo Kojima to possibly work on a horror based game. Mm. I just all yeah. I saw was Kojima and horror in the same sentence. And I got yeah. excited. Uh, Private mm. Division is working with Roll Seven, who made Ali Ali, League of Geeks, that made Armello, but more significantly Moon Studios, which made both of the Ori games. And potentially Dude, the next Ollie. thing that they do, which is going to be a big old RPG that they're very excited about, presumably will not come exclusively to the Xbox. Dude, Oli Oli hype. Don't skip. Really? After like all this time, you feel good about Oli Oli? Yeah. I really love one and two. Oli Oli's so fun. For like it's an hour so or for like a long time? Like, do you play Oli Oli like for an extended period of time? For you like a week. either Oli Oli game? Yeah. It's a game you can beat? It's not just a thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Heck yeah. They seem so hard to me. The timing was so bizarre. I could never get into it. MGS5 players briefly got rid of all of the nuclear weapons in the mm. game, therefore unlocking a cutscene that only, I imagine, a very oh. small group of people still playing this game on PlayStation 3 got to witness. Well, well the, I mean, and then it now there's data mined, a while back. Yeah. It was yeah. data mined immediately. Oh, okay. there we go. Well, they officially yeah. unlocked it. They officially but unlocked it. They're the they accidentally this is the legitimate way. Yeah. The, the PC one accidentally got. played, right? Back yeah, like a few that years ago. was the ago? second time. So it was oh. hacked first. Right. Played accidentally on PC, and now these PS3 guys earned it for 20 minutes. Third time's a charm. So, if there's so hope awesome. For PS3. MGS3. PS3. <laughs> so if Which hope I forgot for this game was even on. Same. <laughs> there's hope for us all. Uh, Sekiro is getting a boss rush mode, new costumes, and souls like messages. Yay. Uh, and that's going to oh. coincide. That's going to coincide. Messages is crazy. That's going to coincide when the game comes adamant. to Stadia. They were adamant about never having multiplayer in that game, I feel like, when it came out. Huh. Uh, Poly to Art me, that th really changes the feel of any of those games. So to add oh, an right. afterthought in a way is, yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, one of the takes I saw was to shepherd uh, new players that might have been too intimidated by Sekiro, and now this will give them a chance to, to watch and learn from I'm curious what they look veterans. Like. Should look that up. Yeah, some new costumes too. Did you say that, mm -hmm. Jones? Oh yeah. Oh, Three yeah. new costumes. Yeah. Dude, boss rush mode. Let's go. Poly Arc creators of Moss, which I played and enjoyed on PSVR, secured another round of funding. Hooray! And they're apparently going to work on a project focused on augmented reality, which is interesting because Moss is very much like see you in the sequel. Like that game definitely. Just go, seems to go straight into whatever they else want to do with the story. So I'd be surprised if that's not it, or if they needed more funding to work on a second project. But um, they, they talked in there about uh, the value of like characters and IP and, and, as well. So I'm curious. The circus yeah, of value. Curious what they're gonna do. What's that? Not Welcome to joke. the circus of value. Oh, nice. But yeah, so like I I feel like the yeah that that mouse may be a very big part of the augmented reality. Speaking Make of a boss red wall modes, game, cowards. A new difficulty tier in a boss rush mode were added to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon too. Uh, Hawkeye's coming to the Avengers after long. Hawkeye! Yeah! Hawkeye! <laughs> knew that was just not a surprise. We knew that was going to happen. He's bald, though. Yeah! I'm bald Hawkeye! Yeah! I don't read Hawkeye, but apparently he's based on a very specific version of him that people are excited about. The purple shirted version. Oh. Um, yeah. Old perp shirt. He's bald. Old perp shirt. I'm in a perp shirt. Animal Crossing's newest update is out. Old, I didn't get to play Animal Crossing today. I didn't have time, but uh, there's a new update. Uh, you, you, can get you, get, you can, via dreams, can go to other people's islands when they're not there. Uh, you can, there's going to be fireworks shows that are coming up, but more specifically what a lot of people have been asking for is now has island backups, which you said, Bloodworth, that people couldn't do on the Switch Lite because it doesn't work over Wi-Fi? Or? That is incorrect. Well, the backup is just a backup. It's, it's like literally you're only able to get access to that thing if your Switch is lost or broken. Like, you basically have to get Nintendo to beam that thing to you. 
but that it works the same on normal yeah. switch and switch light like sophia yeah. put it on her switch it, light she's thrilled <sighs> okay yeah it, it lets you it lets you preserve you know if something happens but it doesn't let you port back and forth from one switch to the next ah uh, yes that's okay. what you're talking about so people about. got yeah. it got it okay um but i have this uh yeah i have the hawkeye image so i'm not sure where the baldness came from because the image that i i got from I mean, there's Square different Enix outfits and bald. stuff. There's a trailer, dude. Right at the there end of the trailer, bald Hawkeye. Like, bald there's Hawkeye. There's an alt costume. There's two costumes. There's the default oh, really? one, and there's an alt one. And uh, the alt one has hair, like blonde hair or something. Alt, okay. That what? It's weird. Why the default one Hawkeye looks like Cole <laughs> from uh, what's uh, Infamous or whatever. I defer to the trailer, which I did not Paul watch. McGrath. Okay. I was busy doing Cup of Jones at the time. Thank you for streaming that, Damiani. A Splinter Cell animated series from John Wick writer Derek Kolstad has said it in Netflix. All those John Wick's crew, man, they're getting in on those video game properties. Uh, and finally, People Can Fly, which made Outriders, which has not come out yet, right? Nope. Outriders is like their nope. next thing. Uh, Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment are making a new AAA IP, which is not Outriders. So I guess they're, they're doing all sorts of stuff. Huh. Uh, it's a new studio. Uh, it's the new, a New York studio that they're building up. Uh, that's going to be leading the charge on that game. Stay tuned, everyone. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It is time. Stay tuned. Was that a TV show? No, it wasn't. You know what it was? No, it was a movie. Oh, my God. It's a movie. I love that movie. Dude, Stay tuned. Dude, I saw that movie. With Ritter. I'm not even kidding. Three days ago, man. I'm not dude, even kidding. Dude, does it hold? Please tell me it holds up. It holds up. It's extremely silly. Hell yeah. Jeremy Hell yeah. That? Jeremy Jones, uh, who, you know, was, the you know, in Beetlejuice, and uh, he was Mr. Rooney, and, you know, liked to yep, watch uh, yep, pictures yep. of uh, naked children. It's fine. I was going to say, you know, that's the one with the oh, child. Whoa. It's a child you know, whoa. personal life acting career whoa. separate things. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 had a, he had a rough patch there. This is John before Ritter, that though. happened. Uh, yeah, the late, great John Ritter. Uh, it's he, about a guy who... Uh, we don't uh, know when that happened. It's about it was before he got caught. Who gets a TV uh, system sold to him by, uh, not the devil, but somebody who works for the devil. And uh, he creates television programming to entertain the devil. And um, thank you, Hubert. I liked that as a kid. Hubert, with an hour and a half in this podcast, man. Come on, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were excited, Rufus. I know. I, cut you <laughs> I had dropped you on the floor. <laughs> it is now time for Love and Respect. Love, Love and Respect. Whoa. From Gustav Strombaum. Hello, panel. Before playing Ghost of Tsushima, I was strongly advised by multiple people to play it on hard, so I did. And that turned out to be a great choice for me, but it also made me think about Jedi Fallen Order, a game I really wanted to play on harder difficulties, but I ultimately ended up turning it down to a much easier setting pretty early on. Why did I do that, you may ask? Because the load times after dying in Fallen Order were over 20 seconds long every time. And I died a lot before I got the hang of the deflect parry timing in that game. In Ghost of Tsushima, however, it took about 2-3 seconds to load in after dying. And as an added bonus, I never had to walk very long to get back to where I was. This made the just one more time I know I can beat this guy feeling kick in almost every time as well. I love both of these games, but the difference was fairly striking. I played both games at launch on a PS4 Pro FYI. So, what's the panel's experience with the relationship between load times and difficulty choice in games and do you think the new generation of console ssds will change people's perspective of difficulty choice love and respect grizzilla great question yeah um load times never really factor into what difficulty i play on if there's more than easy normal hard if there's four i usually play on the one right below the hardest unless it, unless it's a game i'm obsessed with um but yeah I, I usually play on hard hard difficulties uh the only time i've ever not wanted to play something because of load times was destiny it it was oh, yeah. actively it actively prohibited me from playing destiny on consoles the load times were crazy long minutes at a time you're always going back and forth between places just unbearable uh but this is a really great question with with like death yeah like that's yeah I anthem like was that. brutal but it had nothing to do with difficulty it was just like it, uh, load times just... didn't even need to be there in, Des in uh, anthem Shout outs to just in general Ghost of Tsushima's loading times. Yeah. Just like fast traveling. I'm playing on PS4 Pro. Fast traveling, just how fast things oh. load. And that's and like just imagine what PS I mean, I have a better SSD on my PC, so I know what it can do, but for people who have not experienced this, it's gonna be a game changer, I think, in just in general for accessibility and people being able to tolerate a little bit more. It goes a long way. And maybe not necessarily like in terms of like playing on a harder difficulty. 
Uh, it's definitely nice when you instant load after you die and you just get right back into it. Just like games, like, like Super Meat Boy games that have like instant you die, go, 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 go. I hate having to wait, like specifically Nintendo first party games. A lot of those, they don't make you let get, get back in fast enough. And uh, though uh, one game I'm going to give a shout out to is just like in terms of it's not a difficulty setting, but it encourages you to try things out and be a little bit more bolder. The like, game behind me, Xenoblade Chronicles, you die, it just reloads you instantly. It's like a fade really quick and you are back. That's a giant, op- these giant massive environments and you just instant load. You lost to a boss or a high level enemy. You just wanted to try out, see if you could beat it. And you're right back there. It, 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 the games that do that. I can't say enough how much I like that design choice, and I think it encourages people to try things out that they're, it pushes them out of their comfort zone because they know the penalty for that is, I can just try again. So, I, I'm and, all for that. And shout out to being able to change at any time, you know? Like, uh, I think of Last of Us, like, when you beat a chapter, mm-hmm. it'll just say what the highest difficulty you beat it on. But if you play, you're playing on hard or Survivor or whatever, and it gets too crazy, like, just bump it down for a bit. So, and, and Ghost of Tsushima, same thing. You can change any time, no penalty, no trophies depending on difficulty. So, just really accessible. Play how you want to play. From Shadow of Aggro. Hi, guys. Recently, I've played a fair few games that use in-game currency, and at one point, I found myself wondering the different names for money in familiar franchises. Yeah. Aside from the lowball Final Fantasies, Gil, and Zelda's <laughs> Rupees, it proved harder to recall some of them than I would have thought without looking them up. If you'd like to test this out for yourselves, I've listed 10 types of loot below. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. Ratchet and Clank. Bolts. Oh, you want us to... Oh, oh we're doing gosh. it that way. Oh, yeah. Uh, give, me, wow. give, me the, give me the currency. Give me the currency. Bayonetta. Rings? Orbs? No. Gold? No. Like orbs or something? Blood gems? Forget. That's since right, since right, right. launch. Halos. Wait, what was Bayonetta? Oh, uh, I mean, Halo. Oh, Halo. Yeah, sorry. Halo. Ratchet and Clank. I feel yeah. like we didn't, but is it? Is it? Is it just? It's bolts, bolts and bolts? rare. Rare. It's yeah. bolts and rare titanium for upgrades. Okay. Uh, we know who'll get this one. The Witcher. Oh. Aren't that, there a ton? There's a. There's multiple for sure. There's multiple, but there's it's. Um, Orange. It's something. Yeah. Orange. Yes. Think it's, yes. It's different in Witcher Three. Oh, okay. Orin was the answer I was looking for. Okay. Hmm. Um, Persona. Yen. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'm say, like, yeah. it's just Yen. Yeah. 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 Could yeah. potentially be a trick question. Yeah. Uh, Ian, Suikoden. Oh, God. What's it called? Yeah, it does have a funny. Oh. I'm sure it's been forever, Ian. It's no shame. It's been sham. years. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, damn it. As soon as you say it, I'm going to be like, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> it's, sh- it's short. Potch. 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 Yeah. Potch. Potch. yeah. Awesome. Potch. Got any potch? Horizon Zero Dawn. Cells or something? Canister cells? It's, it's, it's yeah. You're on the right track. Some... It's not a weird word. It's just a. It's a known word. It's a very like water world type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt. Bottle caps. Shards. Shards. Pull out, right? No more heroes. I don't. I don't no know. No more heroes. Just dollars. LB dollars specifically. Uh, LB oh. dollars. Dragon Quest. Zenny. 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 Yeah. Oh, he put gold coins down here, but I guess, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. That's a different currency. Yep. Right? Uh, I, I mean, you all jumped on that so quickly. I'll give it to you. Wild Arms. Oh, shit. Whoa. Not any idea. Gela. Uh, Gela. Jeez. Gela. Yeah, I wouldn't have come around to that. Uh, Pokemon. Good game, though. Which one? Pokemon. Yen. In Japan, it is yen. It is Poke Dollars. In the U.S. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Poke dollars. <laughs> Hope you have enjoyed okay. it. Thank you for all the efforts to keep things going Fair during fun. all this uncertainty. That Love and good. respect, Dave Moss. Thank you to everybody that submitted for Hot. Love and Respect this week. Get that so pot. Stupid I was, name I'm, for I'm trying to open up this Witcher thing, but a, some ad is like taking over the whole screen. Blood, you nailed it, man. It's orange, but then you can use the other currencies to trade them into the yeah, bank you for got orange, it right, I remember. Man. Exchange rate. Yeah, Why are you yeah there's like exchange. Dollars. Yeah, you nailed it, Blood. It's orange. right, bro. That's what he wrote. That's what you said. What are we? Why are, mm-hmm. why are we dragging this out? Yeah, what's the problem? You got There's it. like a a page with like a billion of these. Yeah, Orange was was older. Yeah, Orange is the older thing that you exchange. I think it's maybe Crown. Bail us three. out, Jones. 
gosh. <laughs> Florence is also in there. Uh, oh yeah, Florence. And Borens and Gorens. But there's literally He's not I think stop, a, a dozen of these on the page. <laughs> He's not gonna stop. <laughs> He's gonna list currencies for twenty minutes. <laughs> We don't have time. What do currency you know do they use in Quiet, Skellige? Huber. Quiet. <laughs> Blood and wine. I'm not sure. It's time for bets. Next week's bet, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout launches on August 4th. As we have specified and discussed at great length in this podcast, it did very well in its launch on Twitch. Yeah. It's gone for right now, but it is coming to PS Plus, and uh, a lot of people will be checking that game out, presumably when it launches on August 4th. When we record this podcast next week, how many people will be watching Fall Guys on Twitch? Dot TV. Ian Hink. 36,000. Ooh. Maybe too low. I don't know. Michael Huber. 87,345. I'm going <laughs> big. Good, good. Michael Damiani. How big you going? 65,000. Oh, okay. I almost Daniel Bloodworth. 67. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going big. I want to cover the high end on this. 300,000. Ooh! 300,000! I don't think anything right now has that many viewers oh, on Twitch right now. Overwatch finals! <laughs> yeah, dude, what? Wow. Well, I'm definitely taking the lower one. 60k. From me. Nice, the high and low. Yeah. Mine's the low. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's the same. I mean, League of low Legends, low like, ish. championship numbers. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be on the Venn network. Locking those in. <laughs> last week's bet: the official campaign gameplay reveal for Halo Infinite. Last week, before we recorded the podcast, was currently around 490k views. Where will it I be now? This. Uh, we all botched this. The person who did botch it's not even on the podcast. I said 720,000. Blood Where said 900,000. Brad Ellis said 800,000. And Ben Moore. Very close at 1.2 mil. It's around 1.1. Was when I checked for the podcast, which just means he wins anyway. Uh, which brings us to Jovial Penguins 8. <laughs> I forgot to look up the You board. guys still don't have a noise, do you? <laughs> Astonished Scorpions 5. <gasps> They're three ahead, blood. I don't. We'll talk about it later. We'll we'll, we'll have it. We'll... And Fall Guy is gonna blow up, man. Isn't it? Okay, there we PlayStation go. PlayStation Plus. The confidence. All right, they're not gonna be that. playing it, Bloodworth. They're not gonna be Huge. watching it. Huge. I love it. If Fall Guys has 300k, I will gladly lose this bet. <laughs> yeah. And just to specify again, some people might be like, "Wait, the trailer's not doing well." This was the gameplay. So there was a game. There's actually three trailers. There's like a whole separate. It's like be awesome or something. There's a whole separate Halo Infinite trailer. Then there's the reveal trailer. Be the Batman. And then there's the as long as it's Batman the same trailer. link as last week, Jones. That's all yeah. I care about. Remember when you were pissed, Jones? Because you were like, "What have we been doing for the last two no, games?" No, that was the, the dumbest campaign. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'll Jones, never forget you, that. You forgot to mention Blood or somebody posted this in the Slack news channel right before we started that the Halo people. They watched the Digital Foundry, and they were like, we're going to fix yeah. it. We're yeah. going yeah. to fix it. Yay. We'll see. we'll see. Speaking of good campaigns, let me tell you about Patreon.com slash Easy Allies. Now, what you might be thinking is, yes, I've heard you guys mention this. That's where people go to support you. There's a lot of stuff that goes up in the weekly and monthly processes of creating content easy allies that happens only on that patreon we have you know blood taking suggestions for blood pact we just did stream team this week where people can submit games that they want us to stream and they can vote on you know which of those games that we select that we are actually going to specifically stream and uh there's just lots of opportunities to see other content so if you are watching us a lot on twitch if you're checking out our shows other than the podcast on youtube if you follow us on twitter and facebook there's still a great deal of news that is happening just on our patreon page so patreon.com slash easy allies you will fill that it's like this triforce you will get the final last gap of easy allies content there and of course you can financially support us we do have a lot of people there supporting us we only have a, a small group of exclusive members patreon.com slash easy allies that are at our shout-out tier. There are still slots left. We have one more day. Today, well, if, you were, if you ever... Well, yeah, if you have early access, you are yeah, a patron. They'll barely get in, yeah. <laughs> so, if you're listening on Sunday, too late. Maybe next month you can get in there. Um, but uh, for just uh, $250, you can be a shout-out member of Patreon.com slash Easy Allies. And I'm going to roll through those now. Ian, you're going first. I'm going after you. Huber, you're going after me. Got it? After me. Blood, after Huber. Damiani, you're going last. Tifa can join in if Tifa wants to. Shout out to Blue, Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Fanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, and a patron would like to give a shout out to Black Lives Matter. Shout, shout out. out. Shout, shout out. out. Shout out. 
Also, I think Excellent. that's Cloud. Not no, Tifa. Tifa. That's Tifa. Either Which was the white one? Cloud, Cloud's white. Cloud, bro. Oh, that He's makes like sense. A cloud. A cloud. Yeah. All right, everybody, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, think, out, I think the reason it is is that Ian has not caught up on Damiani's stream this week. I didn't yeah. see Damiani's so stream. Would, yeah, you would know if you saw the stream. You're right. You're right. Uh, another, uh, in, Jones, you were mentioning uh, patron content that fill in the gaps. There's also a few, if you're a patron, you get a specific uh, audio feed, podcast feed. Uh, it's generated just for you. That's, that's at right. your level of whatever content level that you're giving uh, that well, has... You know, not only the early access feeds, but also some other audio content that doesn't necessarily go out on a feed like the Q and A. If you wanted to listen to that in the car rather than watch it, you could do that. An excellent addition. Thank you. This is the first time we've had this issue, which in which is Ben Moore is not on the podcast this week, uh, for reasons that blood dropped shockingly. Uh, so we're going to get to split those up. It's between you, gentlemen, Michael Huber and Michael Damiani, and Ian Hink. Who would like to promote any Easy Allies video they'd like to promote? Who gets the final word on anything they've disagreed with? I want to promote a video. Or just popped into their head and they get to sign off with their trademark sign off. The finale of Hunting Huber featuring none other than Brandon Jones in a little game game called Red Dead Redemption 2. Check it out. The back and forth banter is really, really good. (laughs) Actually, I watched watched it before for approvals and then I recently rewatched it at one point Five speed? It's not bad. It's not <laughs> Don't bad. encourage people to do that. Uh, yeah, that one gets unhinged. <laughs> this is a wild, it's a wild west, man. It's a wild, wild time. Uh, well, then that leaves a uh, sign off or um, Final word. something that you want to reiterate or just popped into your head between Damiani and Ian. Uh, I'll do a final word. All right. Cool. Uh, I will do sign off then. What do you got, Ian? Uh, you gotta admit, I've played this stinking city like a harp from hell. Yes. <laughs> or you just could have saved it for another pocket. Now you can't use that one again. There are plenty. There are plenty. Mm-hmm. That's He's a good one, that movie. It's very memorable. Well, until next time, may the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Isn't that what a natural naturist is that a nudist? The Easy Allies would like to thank our Patreon podcast producers. We apologize in advance for all the ally names we are about to misspell and mispronounce. Blue, Caleb Togi Crawford, L Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Jesse Blue. Walker Hope, Nick, Mark Dalga, Will Schmuck, Sigma, Robert Stoffel, Zachary Wingate, Thomas Wigginton Jr., Dave Red, Richard G. Flowers, Paolo Costabel, Discarded Digit, Ali Cat, Damnable Nook, Jay Shee, Happy Gaming, Bradley Speeds, Miguel Rivas, Valmar, Blue Water Blue Sky, Daniel Portillo, Jose Gutierrez, Alex AI, Rob Bob Will, Beaten Down Brian, Jan Tyson, Trum Nguyen, Hayden Hargraves, Roy Sung, G. Levin, David Wen, Matthew Pauling, G. Ken, Gary James, The Banana Forklift Killer, Marcel Markov, Catherine Lai, Todd Yurkovic, Stephen Last, Candy Coated Thorns, Hitman 47, Rack, DRD 7 of 14, Matthew Holcomb, Oni Black Mage, Joachim Morovuo, Niz Klojgaard, Jesper Lawson, Jordan Kirk, James Vitt, Sam Hendrick. Stephen Thomason, Robert Crouch, Luke Bennett, Andy Drew, Neuromood, John Burns, S Snake 24, Mango, Richard Johnston, Mark J. Betters II, Adam Henry, Tim O'Keefe, Ethereal Ether, Brad Grenz, Matthew Eden, Andrew Stoke, Thor Mangus, Jake Musser, Eric Crone, Beastmaster 64, Christopher Santis, Strikeout NZ, Sandra and Richard Acero, David Boyarski, Faraz Rizvi, Pete Shoemaker, Reed Johnson, Manuel Thomas, Michelle Nub, Mike Mizek Novak, Alex Monaco, Paul Bishop, Modren, Zintrax, Marco Hernandez, Daniel Wong, Zustick, V. Kira Ray, Don Turner, Sebastian Urban, Eddie Reisner, Sebastian Trier, 
Adam Scherenbrock, Evan Eng, Raymond Chow, Azazel Valkyrie, Junior Motomura, Ivan Ponce, Tuttle, Bjornor Haraldsvik, Egg Stravaganza, Joshua Vanswall, Stephen Walther, Tense George, Colin Hoyleman, Barry, Cyberboa, Forrest, Eric Maynard, Chase Caldwell, I Sun Chor, Leon Keys, Chris the Pianist, Ian Anderson, Philip Higdon, Nycrypt, Jai Aldiar, Robert I, C.S. Lewis, Ahmed Al Rashed, Bonnie and Jason Connor, Jock, Travis Miosi, Mike Calvi, Alex Glass, The Fatty Show, Neo Bear, Dan Pan 16, Wouter De Hayes, Malcolm Moschette, William Heaney, Not Jack, Mithers Strongbeard, Jana, Anthony Galvin, V8 Dave, Oro Cuccino, Dakota Hayes, The Classiest Hobo, Misuki 211, Matt Karwaski, Liam Ahern, Jason Joint, Bunny Chen, David Kennedy, Materia Addict, Arthur Henrique Chenaglia, Culinary Stud, Magnus Rasmussen, Edison S. Prada Jr., Tim Mann, Sean Rowe, Haley Hill, Crediar, Mauricio Fuentes, Jesse Fish, Gabriel Aberg, Zahid Hosseini Karami, Luis Ibarra, Lee Young, Alexander Zirianov, Morpheus, Christian Hundorf, Brian Foster, Delisi, Sean Cornett, Linson Wu, General Piet, Zio VGM, Matthew Migler, Andrew Smith, Brandon White, Christoph Fatui, Mikhail Aniel, Michael Clendenan, Wen Boshan, Hadi Ali, Aurelien Grenier, Eric Gustafson, Trevor Thomas, Wavering Radiant, Michael Kozachenko, Awesome Express, Adam Lindsay, Corey Landega, Pablo Rodriguez, Alec Church, Ibrahim Sozer, Mike Hook One, Carl Williams, Gustav Strombohm, Volker Bach, Russell Bateman, Lindsay Wells, Jason I, Rickard Enbaum, Nefertiti Jenkins, Tyler Wallace, Kyle Quintero, Jesse Vitelli, Jonathan and Amy Alconis, Quinn Riley, JC3, Paul Nolson, Isaac Swanson, Jameson Lapine, Max His Shame Terman, Jethrin, Bread Roll Art, Matt Ford, Joey Din, Splontot, Jordan Phillips, Ryan Wagner, Matthias Clare, Spencer Stevens, Jeffrey Murillo, Kevin Camposano, Trizak, Matt Ferguson, Jake in Japan, Sam Sorensen, Vincent Foliat, Paul Sway, Michael Baloney, Michael Pliskin, Andy Marks, Tim Strothman, XWF Outlaw, Julius Garcia, Alex Lavanier, Ritz1906, Gon Kef, Joel Short, Dimitri Zetas, Mazrim Tame, Helen Y, Noah Weinstein, Jameson Anderson, Daniel Fuchs, Travis Kikowski, Megadet, Sneaky Gato, Blake Bonsack, W. Crusher, Lion Crown 19, Tom Masterman, Jojo Denko, ZK, Jose Carlos Madrigal, Mr. Anarchy, Thomas Blaze Fauchero, Andreas Risberg, Anti Ataraxia, Dreams of Caffeine, Michael Bisegli, Matthew Holmes, Alexander McEakern, Kodiak Bear 88, Lars Berger, Marcel Giru 17 Frolic, Donley, Erdney Kutnow, Megan McDonough, Rainier Dennis Bautista, Glenn Olson, Ulf himself, Corey Jackson, Natavia Ross, Allison Burt, Ryan Anderson, Jesse Wilkison, Katie Garcia, Jeffrey Ruchtenwald, Dan Sebring, James Davey, Neil Bruce, Silent Consonant, Craig Happ, Travis Ng, Cody Westley, Cisco Ace Jackson Garcia, Kroldemort, Jeremy Ferris, Clay Roberts, Super 3D Cow, Ahab, Malianware, Mick Roper, Accounts Payable, Todd Kramer, Tristan Howard, John Gallagher, Dan Allen, Oscar Tingren, Gray Willow, Andrew Reif, James Vest.